everyone, it is Carla the Bubble Lush, and um, this is my 37 week pregnancy update. It is Monday, August 16th. I'm currently 37 and a half weeks pregnant. Um, but I had my midwife appointment today, so I kind of wanted to wait and um, update you guys once I knew a little bit more. So, this week was interesting. Let's go back to um, last Saturday. I got my hair cut. You guys can't see it now because I threw it up in a ponytail. But the next day, Sunday, was um, my husband's company party. And here's a picture of us. I am amazed that, um, frankly, I think I look really good in this picture. <laughs> and <laughs> I asked you guys, I posted this picture on Facebook and asked you, um, do you think my husband needs to trim his beard? And I think about 90, 97 to 98% of you were like, trim it. I'm saying the same thing, people. <laughs> but the thing is, my husband works with all men, and the men are all jealous because my husband can grow a beard and they can't, and they're just like, that's such a nice beard. It's so, like, thick and full, and so his ego has been stroked, <laughs> and uh, he is not wanting to part with it. But it will happen. I will get the beard trimmed back a lot before Hannah gets here, because um, although it is a really nice beard, I don't really want to be seeing that in her newborn pictures years from now. I'm so vain. Uh, anyway, <laughs> he's very upset with me, but that's my new haircut. Um, Monday I had my midwife appointment and it was a doozy. If you haven't already, watch my 36, 36 week update um, to learn all about the funness, the funness that was my 36 week um, midwife appointment. Really, you should watch that video if you haven't watched it, because it'll explain a lot of things. I hate the camera angle I have right now. It's like all chin and nostril. So I apologize. Um, okay. Oh, I wanted to tell you guys something that um, I've been doing with some friends of mine. Once a month, it's usually like the first or second week, we pick a day, an evening, that uh, works well for all of our schedules. And we meet up at one of the girls' houses, and we do a baking club. And it's actually really, really fun. So this week, this month, um, it was my turn to host it. And what I wanted to do, I mixed it up a little bit, because we're just kind of starting the group out. So um, I mixed it up, and I wanted to make lemon bars. I am like a huge, huge lemon bar lover, but Chris hates lemon bars hates them. So when I make a batch, I have to eat the whole thing. I have to really be dedicated and eat the whole thing. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to make them at Baking Club because that way we can split them between all the girls. But I didn't want to just make lemon bars because so I thought that would be lame. So what I did was I pulled up Paula Dean. Do you guys know Paula Dean? She's on the Food Network. I pulled up her lemon bar recipe and her son, Bobby, makes like lighter, you know, diet versions of his mom's recipes. So I pulled up Bobby's um, lemon bar recipe and we had like a, a bake-off, a lemon bar bake-off. And um, it turns out our opinion was that Bobby's was like hands down better. I didn't think that would happen. I thought Paula's would be better because there's lots of butter and sugar, but Bobby's was much better. So <laughs> if you're looking for a lemon bar recipe, try Bobby Dean's. It's available on Paula Dean's website. But it was really, really fun. It's like a fun night, and while everything is baking, we all just kind of like came and hang hung out in the nursery and, you know, yelled about our men. <laughs> so, and Chris's beard. Oh, I'm trying to get more comfortable. Close up on my face. Okay, so that was really fun. That was Tuesday night. Wednesday, um,. I woke up in the morning because the dogs like started freaking out and oh sorry I just like can't get comfortable. How's that? Okay, oh that's good. Okay, so Wednesday morning I woke up and the dogs were going crazy and it was Chris. And I looked at the clock and he should have already been at work. And uh he was like, I'm not going into work today. And I was like, What? He is never, never in seven and a half years has never called out sick. 
And uh, I was like, what's the matter? And he was like, I was up all night puking. He was like, I was driving to work. I had to pull off on the highway to puke. He's like, I'm just, I'm not going to work. He's like, I'm going to go lay it out on the couch because I don't want to get you sick. So um, I was like, okay, are you all right? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just really tired. I didn't sleep very well last night. So he went and laid out on the couch and um, I went back to sleep. I woke up and my alarm went off. I was in the shower and I was like, you know, maybe I should just stay home and we'll just kind of have like a sick day and because we are never probably going to get the chance again to just lay around all day. So um, it was really nice. We we slept in. I finished taking my shower and then I, <laughs> I went out and laid on the love seat and he was laying on the couch and we laid around until like 11 or noon watching like stupid movies and then we just hung out all day. And it was really, really nice. It was nice for us to have a chance, even though he, like, wasn't really feeling good. It was nice to have a chance to just, um, be the two of us. This is probably going to be one of the last times. So, it was a really fun day, even though he was sick. That night, we did, um, our, our very last child hospital birth, you know, class. And it was our infant safety and CPR class. It was really, really really educational. If you guys, um, you know, frankly, even if you're not first-time parents, even if you have a whole mess of kids at home, I would really encourage you to take an infant CPR um, class, one, because I think it's something that everyone needs to know, and because just the, um, you know, the new studies and the new kind of agreement that everyone has come up with about different things regarding infant safety is really interesting. Um, we also installed our car seats and we found out about a car clinic that we can take them to to get them checked so we need to get that done. Thursday I'm full term! <laughs> 37 weeks. So so excited. So excited. Um, especially considering the news that I had just gotten a couple days before that. Like I was just so relieved to have gotten to full term. Um, you know, when I first got pregnant, the first trimester went by so slow, and I was so tired and didn't feel well, and I just was like, oh god, this pregnancy is just going to drag on forever. And it hasn't. In fact, it's gone by really, really fast, and I can't believe that it's almost over. Part of me doesn't want it to end, because I love being pregnant. Um, even the discomfort and some of the pain and stuff associated with it, like, nothing beats being pregnant. I really, really like it and I really enjoyed it. So I'm kind of sad that it's it's going to be over soon. Um, but I am really, really looking forward to meeting Hannah, obviously. Thursday night, I had an acupuncture appointment. It was my first um, acupuncture appointment for induction. Um, it was interesting because the points that she used, obviously I've, she's never used on me before. All during my fertility treatments, she was doing points to calm my uterus so the baby could implant and everything. And now she's trying to like wake up my uterus, so they're completely different points. And you know, I I didn't know how um, well it was going to work. And I asked her, in fact, not to stimulate the points a lot. Usually she puts the needle in and then she like will um, kind of twist it back and forth or she'll apply heat to it to really stimulate that point. I asked her not to because Chris was leaving the next day um, and going to be gone all weekend for a camping trip. And he's going to be like three hours away. So <laughs> I was like, just, you know, give me a little dose. Don't really stimulate them. And uh, by the time I paid my copay and was walking out the front door, I had serious, serious, like, menstrual type cramps. And I haven't had, um, I haven't had really any activity going on for weeks. The last time I had Braxton Hicks contractions, I don't remember what video it was in, but I just remember I was wearing um, a striped dress and it had a purple cardigan. So whatever week that was, that was like the last week that I had Braxton Hicks contractions. Um, I wanted to discuss why I am pursuing natural uh, methods for induction this early at 37 weeks. Um, First, it is with my midwife's encouragement that I'm doing it, and also with the, uh, the encouragement of um, the perinatology department. They want me to do whatever I can do to start getting 
my cervix to become more favorable, which means, you know, started facing, dilating, doing something, because um, the more favorable my cervix is, the more likely I will go into labor before 41 weeks. If I don't go into labor by 41 weeks, then they're going to look at induction. And inducing when your cervix is not favorable is really kind of dangerous, I think. It puts me on the road towards having a C-section. And with, um, with my blood disorder, having a C-section is very dangerous. So um, I have had some people comment about um, doing acupuncture and, you know, you should really just let her stay in there as long as she wants to. The thing is, um, anyone that makes a comment that's, you know, about, you know, give her as much time as she needs and don't try to induce and just go natural and, you know, you're being selfish. <laughs> you don't understand the concerns um, with this disorder. Like, uh, she is ready to go and the longer she is in there the more at risk she is for um, a blood clot and it could be fatal so the likelihood of that happening is very low but the fact is, is that I don't want to risk it it's it is not worth the risk and I would love to stay pregnant for weeks I would love to go up to 42 weeks and still be like can I just have a couple more days just I know my body can do this but um I'm not going to take that risk. So I'm going to do whatever I can do to naturally try to induce um, acupuncture, spicy food, walking as much as my pelvis can take. Um, sex, I know you guys are going to say sex, fine. <laughs> Those of you that say do sex I mean, do not know how awkward it is when you're 37 weeks pregnant, but <laughs> it's very awkward. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so that is why um, we are pursuing acupuncture, and I'm going twice this week. I have an appointment on Tuesday and Thursday. So if you send me hate mail, it, it's you're the one being ridiculous, not me. So anyway, um, I did have some questions at my midwife appointment about the possible complications with the C-section and Factor Five, and she told me to ask them at my perinatology appointment. So I have that appointment on Thursday. I'll talk more about that later. Anyways, I had my midwife appointment today. Um, stats from my midwife appointment. They took my weight. I, I lost a pound from last week. Um, again, I keep getting people emailing me saying, you should really stop trying to lose weight. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm trying to gain um, healthy weight. Um, I'm absolutely not trying to lose weight, and my weight gain has just been very minimal. It's been about 10 pounds for the pregnancy, and uh, my midwife is really, really happy with that. If she was concerned, I would be concerned, but she's not. The baby is a really good size, so she told me not to expect um, anything less than 8.5 pounds. <laughs> so I guess we'll know more about that later. Um, so anyways, don't yell at me for trying to lose weight. I'm not, but I did. Um, my pee strip was really, really good. It was totally negative for sugar and protein. It wasn't trace or anything. Completely negative. It's good. My blood pressure was normal to low, actually, um, for me. My fundal height was measuring at 40 weeks, which I was kind of surprised about. Um, I don't know what last week's was, but I know the appointment before that I was measuring right on. So I think it's kind of funny that my fundal height is measuring big but like my weight gain hasn't been very much. Hi, Vanessa. What's up, Kitty Cat? Come here. Come on up. Yeah, I know. You don't really know what's going on. Come here. Meow. Can you guys hear her? She is a talker. You probably want to go outside, huh? Oh, good girl. Um. Anyways, she showed me how to feel her head. So she like, oh, cat hair up the nose. Oh. She, <laughs> she showed me how to feel her head, and uh, that was pretty interesting. <laughs> um, I turned in the paperwork for the cord blood donation, so that is all set. I signed my water birth uh, release consent form, so that's all set. And, oh, and last week I had my blood draw done for 
blood draw? No. I had my swab. Remember I told you about that? That was not fun. Um, <laughs> I had my, my group B strep test um, and my results are I'm negative. So that's awesome. I don't have to, you know, like rush to the hospital for antibiotics, but I still am going to have to have an IV, but that's because of the factor five. So after my midwife appointment, I had a non-stress test and um, it was my very first one. I knew that it wasn't going to be that big of a deal, but it was the length of time I was going to be there depended on how well Hannah cooperated. And judging by how uncooperative she's been at every ultrasound, I figured it was probably going to be a pain in the butt. <laughs> and it was. So we started um, in a room that had kind of like a reclining chair. It wasn't like a lazy boy, but it was like a reclining hospital chair. And she put the sensors on and right away, right away she found the, the heartbeat. And we were doing really good. About 10 minutes into it, we were watching Spider-Man. They have a TV, so it was, wasn't boring at all. Um, 10 minutes into it, Hannah moved all over the place and they lost the heartbeat. Um, so they tried to reposition it and about five minutes after that, they lost the heartbeat again. So they tried to reposition and she was in such a weird she was laying really strange and they couldn't find the heartbeat so they were like we know she's in there because we can hear her kicking non-stop non-stop but um, we need to get her heartbeat so they're like come with us and you're gonna lay on the table so they laid me on the table and what was and they brought in an ultrasound and it turns out she was facing up so they were trying to listen to her heartbeat through her chest instead of through her back it's much easier to hear the heartbeat through the back so they had me roll over onto my side and um the position that the sensor had to be in was like really precarious, so Chris ended up having to come over and hold it on my stomach to apply the correct pressure um, for the whole 20 minutes. <laughs> it was just ridiculous. So it took us about an hour. Um, wasn't a big deal. I didn't have any contractions. There was barely even a blip on that sensor because you have a sensor for the baby's heartbeat and a sensor for contractions, and contractions was like per there was nothing going on, which is fine, whatever. Um, I would have been shocked <laughs> if it had registered anything. You would think I would feel that. Um, but she, they, it was interesting because on the strip, her heartbeat was on the top, contractions were on the bottom, and, um, kind of in the middle, every time she moved, there was a, a black dot, and probably 15 out of the 20 minutes of the strip was just almost a solid black line. She was moving the whole time, and um, so the nurses had very little <laughs> patience for her. They called her a troublemaker, and she is. She's a total diva, but at least she's letting us know what her personality is going to be like. <laughs> so anyway, the non-stress test wasn't a big deal. They think she's fine. Of course she's fine. She's great. I have a growth scan scheduled for Thursday just to make sure. Factor 5 has some issues with um, interuterine growth restriction. Uh, I don't think that's an issue for us, but they want to make sure. And then that's followed up with an appointment with the perinatologist. So I might do a mini update on Thursday. It depends on how the appointment goes. So I checked my PO box this week and oh my goodness. So super sweet. I want to show you guys. So Jenny, a fellow Oregonian, she saw one of my Facebook updates was about this super, super cute crocheted hat that I was like, I wish I knew how to crochet because that would be perfect. And she made one and she sent it to me. Look at how cute. Oh my God. So cute. You see the detail on the bottom? Oh, thank you so much, Jenny. Seriously, love it. Um, I can't wait to put it on her. So, so cute. Love it. So I'm putting it in her hospital bag and I'm going to put it in the front pocket right next to like my nipple cream because I figure I will definitely use the nipple cream and that way I'll see it and remember to put it on her. So I don't want it to get like lost in the diaper bag and then forget to put it on her. So thank you so much. It's really, really cute and I really appreciate it. Uh, this is Baronessa. This is the kitty cat you heard in this video. She wants to go outside so bad because she is a wild cat. She's wild. 
That's why she has a pink harness and a, uh, <laughs> you look so weird, and a pink little ID tag. You a good girl? Are you looking forward to a baby? She's not.